friends. Glad to see you made it. We are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, He is alive. My friends, I want to remind you that we're going over the, the book of Romans and and going through all this great wisdom that, that Paul is sharing with all of us today and, and, and all the people of his time. You know, and, and we got to remember that, that back then, in those days, they, they were very extremely religious people. You know, they, they didn't have no problems sacrificing animals or, or burnt offerings or or any of these crazy things. They, they were extremely religious people. And, and and that's basically the book of Romans, you know, is what is our motives? Well, what's our motives behind what we do and, and and the things we do, and why do we do them? You know, and it's going over and talking about how, how, how the the love God has and and the free gift He has uh, of taking away your sins and the love from Jesus Christ, it's it's a great honor, and it's a great thing to to be a part of that, and. The reasons why we do the things we do is all right there. You know, it's not an excuse to sin at all. In fact, it's the reason why we we don't sin. You know, and that's the thing. It's just like how with with Jesus' death, we, we, we are healed and reconciled with God. But, but how much greater is it through through his life? Through, through living out the, these things. And it's not much. It's living out a, a love for one another. And it's agape love. You know, it's love from, from your heart. And that's what the book is about. Is our, what is our motives? You know, Jesus says that, that all those who love Jesus... Love God our Father as well. For God sent Jesus. And you're, you're recognizing, you're, you're acknowledging that, that our Heavenly Father and His kindness and His patience and His love. You know, and sometimes even Christians as we pray in, in our prayers and we may feel that our prayers aren't being answered, you know, but but, but that's patience. You know, that, that's God and His love and His patience. And we too need to have patience and faith and trust in Him. You know, you got to realize that, that there's, in order to, to, to answer prayers, sometimes it takes many people and, and things and, and to orchestrate and come all together to, to make things happen. And that could take 20 years. Could be instantly. We, we don't know, but it takes great patience. And sometimes the answer to our prayers is no. Maybe, maybe that the pain or the situation that we're in brings glory to, to God. And, and that's the will of God. It's through that pain that His glory could be seen. And that takes patience on our part to, to accept the, that, you know. In the same way, Jesus, when, when he was going to be crucified, he knew what was going to happen and all the stuff that was going to come out. And, and he prayed with, with great suffering. And, you know, Father, is there any other way that, that your will could be, could be done? To, to, to fulfill that will, to, to, to justify your love for these people any other way. But, but not my will, your will, because it's your will that he loved. You know? And, and there was no other way to, to, to bring the great, awesome glory and, and to show the love God has for all people. 
You know, it's strange how, you know, to, to lay down your life for a good person, you know, that, that's logical. To, to lay down your life for, for a holy person, that, that's logical. But, but to lay down your life for sinners and haters and the wicked, that's an act of God. <laughs> You know, who, what man on earth would do that? You know, and that's the thing. Like, like Paul says, you, you, you can't fight evil w with evil. You know, it's not about who's got the biggest gun or, or the most guns. You, you can't fight evil with evil. You, you fight evil w with love and mercy. And just the fact that we love it and show mercy to them and, and, and prayers to them, it, it's like putting hot coals on their head. You know, we got to keep in mind that, that God is our avenger. God is the judge. And he's a just God. And let's leave all that judgment and, and stuff in the hand of God. Let's trust God to, to know that that He's got our backs. And as we look into the world today and we see Christians and people being murdered in great suffering, we got to remember that, that as much as it hurts us, how much more does it hurt our Father in heaven? And let's just trust God. What, what we as servants, what we as children of God, what we need to do is focus on Jesus Christ and that love and the power he has to, to save humanity. Fallen man, broken man. And, and that's going to be through our love. You know? So let's move on. Let's go through this book and we'll see to understand that that the, the power of love and the power of God's love. And, and keep in mind always that, that it's our faith in Jesus Christ. Our faith in what he did for us. It's never about the works. And not through the law are we going to be justified. But only by our faith and trust in God's love for, for us. That, that's what's going to save us. And you know, that's the thing, is once Jesus comes into your life, into your heart, He will change you. Your mind will, will, will it, it's about the thoughts in your mind. You know, we, as men and women, we're, we're sinners, and, and that's what we want to do by nature. You know, it's very easy to get angry at, at, at evil people. It's tough not to judge them. It's great suffering. It's hard to, to, to give to, to, you know, to someone who doesn't deserve it. That, that's tough to do. But it, that is Jesus living in us. That, that makes that, those things worthwhile. See value in, in helping somebody in need. You know, and that's the thing. It's going to write the law of God in, in your heart. And that's to love each other. And faith and trust in God is to pray. You know, like first fruits to God in our trust. And that includes waking up in the morning and the very first thing, your very first thought is on God, our Father. You know, each night we go to sleep, it's like, like we die. And each morning is a new day and a new morning and a new chance to, to live with God again here on earth. And, and that's the thing, we need to, to wake up first with God. You know, first fruits of everything, our whole life, she should go to God. And it's not because that's going to save us. 
That, that's our love and our gratitude and our thanksgiving to Him for, for His love for us to, to give us immortal life, eternal life. <clears throat> you know that this life is only the beginning. We, we, we have no fear of death no more. <clears throat> Jesus ha has taken that, that, that sting away. And that's our faith in, in God. That we have nothing to worry about when, when death comes our way. So let's move on. Let's start here, chapter 2. Therefore, he says, You have no excuse, old man. Every one of you who judges... For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself. Because you, the judge, practice the very same thing. We know that the judgment of God rightfully falls on those who practice such things. Do you just suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things, and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? You know, we cannot judge. He, even the, the adulterers and, and, and the murderers and, and the, the, the sexually immoral cannot judge them. You know, we are not judging people by the law of God. The, the law of God is there to, to have knowledge of sin. For if there was no law, there, there'd be no knowledge at all of any sin at all. The, the law is there like, like the forbidden fruit back in, in the Garden of Eden. You eat from this and surely you will die. And Paul says, let's do the die willingly. As Jesus Christ willingly laid down his life for us. Let's willingly lay down our lives for, for our brothers. In the gospel and God's love for us. You know? And, and that's the thing with judging others. But by judging them according to the law, you're, you're saying you don't believe Jesus Christ healed broken men, but by, by atoning for their sins through, through the sacrifice of laying down his life for us. You're saying you don't believe in him. You know? And that's the thing. If we believe Jesus rose from the dead, sent by God to atone for, for the sins of fallen man, then we need to put all our faith and trust in that, in God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's deliverance. Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness? and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead to repentance. But because of your hard and impatient heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will render to each one according to his words. To those who by patience in well-doing seek for the glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil, the Jews first and also the Greeks, but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, the Jews first and also the Greeks, for God shows no partiality. And, and, and that's the thing, is if you're outside the will of God, you're out living in, in sin, in, in unbelief in God, your, your life is full of, of great distress and tribulation. You know, you're, you're worried. And I don't care who you have, who you are. The more money you have, the more stuff you have, 
that the more worried you are about your stuff and money. And you're consumed into worry. And, and you see it today, you know, especially church, anywhere, everywhere. Each and every one of us human beings, and it's me too, it is we are lost in ourselves. That's all we can see. That's all we can think about is, is me, myself, and I. My family, my stuff, my, my job, my whatever's going on right there in our lives. We're in our own world, always. Even when we go to church, if somebody strikes up a conversation, it's always going to be about them. Or, or it's going to turn to you. And then it's just back and forth, you know, and who's got the better story, who knows more, and, and we're self-absorbed. It's all about us. And that's the part with Christianity and, and laying down yourself to where you and me ourselves are not the most important thing. You know, and that's trust. You know, that, that, that our lives, it, 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 it's, it's all meaningless without Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, God, is the most important thing. And if we have faith in Him, and believe, and trust Him, you know, we don't, ourselves, we're not consumed by, by, by what we don't have. Or what we need. Instead, we're, we're concerned. We're, we're, we're worried about those who, who don't have the most important thing. God. In their lives. So, let's move on. For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. For the Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires. They are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness to their conflicting thoughts, accuse or even excuse them on that day when according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. And that's the thing, we must remember that that, that there's that day when, when we're going to be judged by God. And, and Jesus says, make sure you're not naked on that day. Make sure you're not having no clothes. Because on that day, you know, those thoughts, those, those things on your mind that, that nobody on earth will ever know that you think. It, it's those days in front of everyone. Like on the giant big screen TV. There you be with your thoughts. And all them dirty, nasty thoughts you had of your neighbors. That you thought nobody would ever find out. That, that, that little secret. It's all going to be there for, for everyone to see. Everyone. Even me. Even us. Even your mom and your dad and your children, who you never wanted to know, they too. And Jesus says, you, you want to be clothed on that day. And that is through the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. And to be clothed and dressed in His blood, in His forgiveness. You, you will never be judged. You will not be condemned. He, he bought you. He paid for your sins. But, but those who unbelieve, they'll, they'll be there standing there naked. 
You know, that's like today. You see that the end of the world is coming and, and what if that, that great uh, disaster came and, and a, a great fireball from the sky comes down and, and knocks the earth away? Are you going to go run and hide and bury yourselves in caves and in places and, and bunkers? Or are you going to, to come out and be glorify God and come, Lord Jesus, in great happiness, great love to, to, to be a part of the coming of our Lord? Or are you going to hide? You know? The Lord come, wipe out the earth and take everybody with him and there you are hiding in the, in the caves because you are afraid to die. Afraid to lose your life. Come walking out and there's nothing left <laughs> but you. No food, no trees, no animals, no nothing. Just you because you are afraid to, to, to face God. But all those Christians who believe in Him, they, they'll be there ready to, to see our Lord. Blessed is the man who, who waits and, and it just overwhelms you with excitement to, to see him and his coming and his appearing. It's your love for him. Why the others are afraid. So let's go on. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast in God and know his will and approve what, what is excellent, because you are instructed from the law, and if you are sure that you yourself are a guide to the blind,